here trying to help you. I'm here to give you what it took me 30, 30 years in ministry to get. Now let's get right into God's word. We're going to go back to Ephesians chapter 5 because this is our series. And we're moving right along. I hope you got this morning's subject because we got to a whole lot of good stuff. Ephesians chapter number 5. One verse, verse number 17, is our scripture, Ephesians 5, 17. It says, Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Otherwise, what is the will of the Lord? Amen. And the will of the Lord was given to the apostle Paul. We gave you that. We'll show you that right quick. Acts chapter number, we go back to Acts chapter number 22. The will of the Lord was given to the Apostle Paul. God showed Paul what the will of the Lord was. Acts 22 and verse number 14. This is what God gave Paul. Acts chapter 22 and verse number 14. And he says, the God of our fathers has chosen you that thou should know his will. See, that's what I'm talking to you about. See that just one. Hear the voice of his mouth. Thou shalt be his witness unto all men what thou hast seen. All right, now, let's go to Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26, we want to look at one verse, and we're going to see what Paul's mission is. You hear people today talking about what the mission of the church. It's not the mission of the church, it's what was Paul's mission. The mission of the church was done by the children of Israel and the apostle Paul, Peter, James, and John. I'm going to show you that in the word of God. Yet people don't know. That's why they don't know what the will of the Lord is. They're still trying to preach to you, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Go ye to all the world. That's what God told Peter, James, and John, and that's what they did, even Paul. But you understand what the will of the Lord is. Acts 26, 18. Paul ministry has opened their eyes, talking about the Gentiles, turn them from darkness to light. Turn them from darkness to light. Now, darkness there is flesh or the old covenant or natural things. Let me say it again. Darkness is the old covenant, flesh, natural thing. Turn them from that to light. Light is Christ. Light is spirit. All right? Turn them to spiritual thing. All right? And then it says, from the power of Satan that they might receive forgiveness of sins. Didn't tell you to do anything, just receive. Forgiveness of sins among them which are sanctified by faith. So the Jews were sanctified by faith that is in me. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you now for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for that anointing. Thank you for the Christ that dwells in us. Thank you for giving us the Holy Spirit, your righteousness, peace, and joy. Now we ask you to lead us and guide us, help us to understand your new covenant. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Thank for all those people who helps and support and bless this ministry. Thank for hearing and answering our prayers, Father. In the blood and the name of our precious Lord, Jesus is the Christ. All the grieve their prayers said amen. All right, now, what I want to do today is I want to tell you we are in, that's why I read Ephesians 5, 17. The series is understanding God's vision. Remember, the will of the Lord is God's vision. And we are naming the part six out of this volume three. It really is four volume, but the last three is called Understanding God's Vision. And this is part number six, Understanding God's Vision. All right, now this morning, I'm not going back through this. This morning I gave you these things. I said, let no man deceive you. I gave you scriptures on that. I gave you the just shall live by faith. Let's go to Romans chapter 3, verse 30. The just shall live by faith. The just at that time was Israel. You are not living by faith. See, they had to live by faith. Let me show you your scriptures. Now, Romans chapter 3 and verse 30. Let's look at that. Romans chapter 3. Now, my subject, once again, is understanding God's vision, part 6. But let's look at Romans chapter 3. This is how the Jews were justified. This is how we were justified. Romans chapter 3 and verse 30. Seeing, there it is, it is one God which shall justify the circumcision, which were Jews, by faith, 
Remember, they were justified by faith and the uncircumcision through faith. Now, I gave you how to know by faith. By faith, you read Hebrews chapter 11. Everybody that's by faith had to do something. By faith, Noah. What did Noah have to do? Build an ark. By faith, Moses. What did Moses have to do? See? By faith, Abraham. Everybody by faith had to do something. So I gave you two words in your salvation by faith. By faith is whoever called on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's by faith. They were saved by faith. They were saved because they had to call on the name of the Lord. Through faith is the Lord call you to salvation. That's through faith. So I'm going to give you a couple of verses that we're going to move on. We're going to go to uh, Galatia first. Galatia 2 and verse 20. We're looking at through faith. And then we'll show you Ephesians. So two places. Galatia chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2, we want to look at uh, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, here it is, I live by the faith of the Son of God. How do I live? I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. See, I live by his faith, the faith of the Son of God. But let's look at Ephesians chapter 2. In Ephesians chapter number 2. Ephesians chapter 2. We want to look at verse number 5. Or verse 4, I'm sorry. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, where is great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ, by grace you are saved, and has raised us up together, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ, and that in the ages to come, he might, the word ages there is the same thing as dispensations, all right? That's why he's talking about in the dispensation to come, which would be grace. Remember when Paul wrote this, the dispensation of grace hadn't happened. He was giving them the word that in the ages, the dispensation to come, we saw that in Ephesians 1 and 10, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace, see, and his kindness toward us by Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved, Watch this, through faith. For by grace are you saved through faith, see? Not of yourself, it's the gift of God. So every time something is through faith, that means it was through what, what Christ Jesus did. Not a work, see? Works is by faith. Lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus of the good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. So by grace are you saved, but it's through faith. All right, now. Those are the two, by faith and through faith. So we went through those this morning. We went through, showed you also, once in the end of the world. We go to that in, in Hebrew chapter 9, verse 26. But once in the end of the world, Christ died to put away. Let's show you one verse. King James, we're going to read it out of King James. Hebrew 9, 26, just one verse. This is going to take us. Hebrew 9, 26, once in the end of the world. Why? Because they have to... Live by faith. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 23. I'm going to read just that one verse. Hebrews chapter number 9 and verse 23. There it is. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 23. Watch what it says. Once in the end of the world. That's what I want to show you. When you read Hebrews chapter 9 verse 23, that's what you want to look for. One verse, Hebrews 9, 26, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I said 23, Hebrew 9, 26. All right, for then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, remember 2,000 years ago, but now, once in the end of the world, and we showed you that word, world was age, hath, hath, past and hath, he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. He has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. When? Once in the end of the world, end of the age. Okay, not the cosmos, not the planet. Okay, that's not ending. It was a dispensation leaving. It was the law leaving. It was the Old Testament leaving. All right, now, we're gonna, that's going to take us into our new teaching. Now, let me give you a couple more here on the once in the end of the world. Uh, let's look at Hebrews 10.23 while we're there. We're in Hebrews. 
Look at 1023. So these people have to live by faith. They were given faith, they have to live by it, and they have to believe all the way to the end of the world. So Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23, watch what it says. Let us hold fast, what? The confession of our faith. That's why people today tell you you got to confess your confess, confession of faith to be saved. That's not you. You're not a Hebrew. Hebrews had faith, and they had to hold on to their confession of faith to the end so they could be saved. You are saved by grace. I just showed you that in Ephesians 2, 2 and verse 1 through 10, if you read that. Let us hold fast a profession or confession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. All right, that's how they were saved, by holding fast. That's why Jesus told them he didn't endure to the end should be saved. So they had to go to the end. Let's show you another one under that. Uh, Hebrew 10, 28 to 30. Why are you in Hebrew? Let's go look at verse 28 through 30. Watch what Paul is going to say to these Hebrews. How you know they're Hebrews, pastor? That's the name of the book. They were Jews. They were Hebrews. But they were overcomers. See, the word Hebrews means you were overcomers, okay? They had overcome the law. Hebrews 10, 28. He that despises Moses died without mercy on the two or three witnesses. Verse 29. Uh, Hebrews 10, 29. How much sore punishment suppose you shall be thought worthy who has trodden underfoot the Son of God and has counted the blood of the cup. He's telling you about going back. So that's what you want to say to somebody this morning. Don't go back. Because that's what Paul was saying. You can't go back now. Remember, they were Hebrews. They had overcome the law, and now they were contemplating going back to the law. So Paul is going to say to them, He that despises Moses, the Lord died without mercy on the two or three witnesses. How much sore punishment suppose you be thought worthy who has trodden on... This, this is the only way you're going to get back. You got to trodden on the foot, the Son of God. You, have, you got to count the blood of the covenant when you were sanctified an unholy thing. You're going to have to do spite to the spirit of grace. You're going to have to walk all over God to get back. Then in verse 30 it says, We know him that has said, Vengeance belong to me. I will recompense, said the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. But then he's going to tell them, verse 32, he said, Listen, call to remember the former days in which after you was illuminated. Now he's talking about after you received the Holy Spirit, you endure a great fight of afflictions, partly why you were made a gazing stock, both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly why you became companions of them that will show you. He's talking to Hebrews. For you had compassion on me and my bonds, and you took joy for the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourself that you have a, in heaven a better and enduring substance. All right? Then they're going to tell them, look, cast not away therefore your confidence. That was a faith, which has great recompense of reward. Remember, you're going to need your faith to get your inheritance. Remember Jesus Christ told them when he come, when he find faith on earth? He didn't do it to the end. Hold fast your confession of faith, Hebrews 10, 23. Cast not away therefore your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. You have need of patience. That after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Talking about eternal life. Watch what it said. Yet a little while, and he that shall come will come. Who is he talking to? Hebrews. See, we were Gentiles. We were not waiting on Christ to return. They were. I'm going to show you to you in the Word. For yet a little while, and he talking about Christ, that shall come, will come, and will not tarry. But now the just shall live by faith. Remember I start that off? But if any man draw back, or if you go back, Paul said, my soul shall have no pleasure in you. But we are not of them who draw back. We're not going back, because you go back, you're going back to perdition. You're going to die. But of them that believe, we got to believe how long? To the saving of the soul. So they had to believe to the end to be saved. He that endured to the end shall be saved. Wasn't talking about Gentile. 
Paul was talking to Jews at the end of their dispensation. All right? Now, there was something else I told you I'm going to show you. See, he didn't do it to the end. The same should be saved. All right? Well, I'll think about that in a minute, but let's move on. Now, now let's go to Romans chapter 13 for today. Romans chapter 13. So his whole thing, well, don't go back, brothers. You're going to die. Romans 13, 10. All right. I said I'm going to show you something. I forgot about it. Romans chapter 13. It'll come back up. The Holy Ghost will bring it back. Romans 13 and verse 10. Now, let's read this, uh, read this because I want to read it out of the King James. Then I'm going to go back and read it out of the Good News. Romans chapter 13. Now, I'm going to read out the NLT. I'm sorry. I'm going to read out the King James first, then I'm going to read out the NLT. All right, watch this. Watch what Paul's saying in Romans chapter 13. See, what we do is we read everything in the Bible, we think everything in the Bible is talking about us. That's why Paul says, steady, show yourself a pool, a workman that need not to be ashamed, watch this, rightly dividing the word of truth. Not rightly dividing what's wrong and what's right, but rightly dividing the word of truth. You got to know what's yours and what's not yours. You got to know when God talking to you and when God talking to Israel. See, they was on the gospel of the kingdom. We was on the gospel of Christ. All right, here we go. Romans chapter 13, verse 10. Here we go. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Love is a fulfilling of the law. Now he's going to go into telling them something. And that, knowing the time, He's talking to Hebrews again. Watch what he's going to say to them. Knowing the time that now it is high time. High time for what? High time to awake. Wait a minute, how do I know they were Jews? Because they were blinded. So now God was telling them it's time for you to wake up, brothers. See, God blinded them so we could be saved. He blinded their minds. So now he says it's time for them to wake up. Watch this. Knowing the time that it's high time to wake out of sleep. Now is our salvation. So you know he can't be talking to you. Why do I know that? Because the gospel of Christ is your salvation. Just write this message, write this down, Romans chapter 1, and verse 16. Just write it down. We're not going to be able to go to it right now. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation. God gave us, write them down, Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13. Told you the gospel of Christ is your salvation. Just those two verses. We'll deal with them later. All right, watch what he's going to say here in verse 11, Romans 13 and 11. Knowing the time that now is high time to wake out of sleep, for now is our salvation. Hebrews, near the same thing Peter said to the Jews. Paul is saying to the Jews also. Now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. Watch what he's going to tell them. The night is first spent. Now, the night here is the Old Covenant. The Old Covenant was the night. Now, the only way you're going to understand this, I'm going to have to let you in on a little something. I know I'm teaching on the web, and you have to be very careful what you say because people will take your information and go sell it, make them a book or something. But I have to share this, okay? All right, now, when you read Genesis chapter number 1, at the end of Genesis chapter 1, let's go to that, Genesis 1, 31. I'm going to have to show this because if you can't understand this, if you can't understand uh, dispensations, there are six dispensations. So you cannot understand this until you can understand six dispensations. Or can I say there are seven, really? And we're going to say we are, we are living now in the seventh day. 
but let's look at it, what's coming. Let's see how good you are in your theology. Now, in Genesis chapter number 1 and verse 31, that's what we're waiting on. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 31. Just going to read that one verse. And God saw everything that he made, and behold, it was very good. Watch the term. The evening and the morning were the sixth day. All right. The evening and the morning were the sixth day. Now, the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Now, let's go to 2 Peter 3, 8. Remember, how many days? Six day. Now let's go to 2 Peter 3, 8. Now when you go back to 2 Peter chapter 3, we're going to come back to Romans 13 in a moment. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 8. I want to show you something. To be able to understand the word of God, you have to understand the word of God. You just can't know a few, few scriptures. 2 Peter Chapter 3 8. Now watch what Peter's going to say. Uh, We're we going to have to back that up. And I'm just going to have to read verse 1. I really didn't have, really want to go through that, but I'm going to have to do it to give you the whole, whole area. Okay, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 1. Let's go all the way back to verse. Here we go. The second epistle, Paul, Peter says. The second, Peter, second epistle of Peter, he says, Beloved, now I write to you in both which to stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that you may be mindful of the word which was spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandments of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, there shall come in the last days. They are in the last days. Last days are not in your future. Peter was in the last day. I gave you Hebrew 9, 26, once in the end of the world. All right, the last days were in the days of the apostle Peter. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, where the promise of his coming? Remember, what was he saying? Where the promise of his coming? Jesus promised that he was coming. But watch what... Watch what Peter going to say. For since the fathers, this is what they're saying. Where well, the promise of his coming since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the, of the creation. Peter going to respond. This they are willingly ignorant of, that by the word of God, watch this, by the word of God, the heavens were of old. By the word of God, Watch this, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world, watch this, that then was being overflowed with water, perished. He's taking them back what Jesus says as in the days of Noah. What happened to the old world? The old world perished. And everybody that were in it. Jesus says in the days of Noah. That's what happened with the old, old world. It overflowed. It wasn't like it overflowed in America. He's talking about the promised land, church. He's talking about Judea. He's talking about where Israel lived. Whereby the world that then was overflow with water perish. So when you read Genesis chapter 7, you will see that. But, he's going to stop right there and say, but the heavens and the earth, which are now. Well, how can you still have heaven and earth? Remember, Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. What is he talking about? He's talking about two things. The temple... Heaven, the temple, Jerusalem, going to pass away. And the Old Testament believers who didn't want Christ as a nation, they're going to pass away. What did Jesus say he's going to do? He's going to make a new heaven, a new temple, 
a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwell righteousness. Well, what the new heaven, new earth that he built, Pastor? The new temple. Remember, no, you're not you the temple of God. You are where God lives now. Remember, God used to live in a, a physical man-made temple. He doesn't live in a temple made with hands no more. The new temple and the new earth. See, it's not, it's not natural no more. Remember? Now, in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 7 again. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, he's looking at a physical temple, he looking at a physical Jerusalem, which are now by the same word it kept in store. Watch this, reserved unto fire. So that's why when you go to AD 70, it'll tell you Jerusalem was destroyed. Plowed up, Jeremiah. The Old Testament prophets told you they're gonna plow up, plow it up, tear it down. But the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire, watch this, against the day of judgment, or against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. At the end of that dispensation, Jerusalem was completely destroyed. Jesus told you in Matthew 24, not only he was going to destroy Jerusalem, but he destroyed the devil also when he came. He that sitteth in the temple of God as playing like he's God, when the Lord comes, he's going to burn him up with the brightness of his coming. Did you read that? Well, if, if Jesus hadn't come, then the devil's still there, and where is he? In the temple of Jerusalem? No, there's no more temple over there. You just need to catch on and catch up. Now, in verse 8, we are in 2 Peter 3, 8. That's where we are. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. This is what I want to show you. I gave you Genesis chapter number 1, verse 31. The evening and the morning was the sixth day. Here we go. Why he says sixth day? Because God is dealing with dispensations. His creation was in dispensation. But beloved, be not even of this one thing, that one day with the Lord as a thousand years. So you go back and look at Genesis chapter 1, and he says in the evening and the morning was the first day, and then the evening and the morning was the second day. You just went to dispensation number 2, dispensation number 3, dispensation number 4, dispensation number 5, dispensation number 6. And you have to understand that because the day, the day with the Lord is after a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. Now let's go back and look at it. How many dispensations were that? Six, six days. Now when I read Romans chapter 13, you're going to see it. So Paul knew that they were at the end of the close of the day. And I'm going to show you what he's going to say. He's going to say the night is for spent and the day is at hand. Another dispensation is about to come on this scene. Well, what that dispensation is going to be? It's going to be grace. Now watch, watch this very carefully because this is going to help you, help you out. Now, let me keep reading. Let me, read, let me, let me finish reading Second Peter chapter 3 since I'm in this. And verse number 9, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, he says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us what, so he's talking to Jews, us what, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That was their ministry, come to repentance. But the day of the Lord, but the day of the Lord will come. Remember, he's changing the same thing that's in Thessalonians. The day of the Lord will come, watch this, as a thief in the night. In the which the heavens shall pass away. The heavens, he's talking about Jerusalem. With a great noise. And then it says the elements, all the teachings of the old covenant, 
shall melt with fervent heat. He's not talking about a planet. He's talking about Jerusalem. Jerusalem. He's talking about the sun, the moon, the stars. Jerusalem. All right. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. The elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also in the works. See, everything in the Old Covenant was their works. Now, just think about it. Their works was the bread on the table, the communion table. Their works were foot washing. Their works were water baptism. Their works were all animal sacrifice. Their works were circumcision. All this was their works. Guess what happened to it? Right here, Peter says, the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. See, all that's been destroyed, and yet, you know what we're doing? We're doing the same thing. We made ourselves a new communion table. That's what I did. Made ourselves a new baptism pool that I could just plug up and cut down and the water get hot. See, I made myself a new, all this stuff, we, we just made it. All of it been destroyed. Old things are passed away. How to get back in the church? Through religion and tradition of men. Watch what Paul says. Peter, Peter. The earth also and the works of therein shall be burned up, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought you to be in our holy conversation and godliness? Watch what he said to the Jewish believer. Looking for and hasting until the coming of the day of God. They were waiting for God to come, not you. Were in the heavens being on fire. Listen, Jerusalem is not on fire. When, he's talking to those people. Jesus came back. Jerusalem was on fire. Jerusalem was dissolved. The elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, Peter, according to his promise, Peter said, we look for new heavens and new earth. Well, who you think the new heaven, new earth is? Christ. We look for new heaven, new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Well, where righteousness is at, Pastor? It's in Christ. I gave that this morning, Romans 14, 17, the kingdom of God, not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace and joy, where? In the Holy Ghost. That's where you find righteousness in the Holy Ghost. Christ is the righteousness of God. Paul says, Peter said, verse 14, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that we look for such things, be diligent that we may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. They had to be found without spot, blameless. Remember, not with us. Christ is our spotless one. Christ is our sacrifice. Christ has perfected us forever. See, they had to be without spot and blameless. And then it says, an account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you. So Peter's letting them know, Paul told us about all this stuff. That's how they learned it. Go back to Romans chapter 13. I hope you like that little sojourn. Romans chapter 13. And we're going to start reading with verse 11. Now we're reading this out of the NLT this time. Romans chapter 13. Let me get my NLT. Romans 13 and verse 11. Now this is, this is an awesome thing when you hear it. it. When you put it in its context. Romans chapter 13. And we want to look at verse number 11. Romans chapter 13. Let me get there. There it is in verse number 11. Watch what he says. I'm going to come to you. Romans 13, 11. We read out the NLT. This is all the more urgent. So listen, pay attention. Paul says, you know how late it is. What is he talking about, Paul? Well, Christ died at the end of the world. So he knows the end of all things. 1 Peter 4, 7. We're not going there. 1 Peter 4, 7 says, the end of all things is at hand. 
Now here Paul says, this is all the more urgent. You know how late it is. Time is running out. Time is running out. Wake up. Our salvation, wait a minute, our salvation, can't be talking about the Christ because Christ is our salvation. Well, how do we get our salvation? We got our salvation in word form. When the gospel is preached to us, the gospel of Christ is our salvation. Here, wake up, our salvation is near now than when we first believed. The night is almost gone. The night is almost gone. He's talking about the old covenant. It's going to pass off, it's going to pass off the scene. God's going to fold it up, put it away. One scripture says, the night is almost gone. The day of salvation will soon be here. The day of salvation, who is he talking to? Talking to the Jews. Hold your finger right there. Well, now, you write this down. We'll go to it in a moment. Write it down. We'll go to it in a moment. You want to write down Romans 11, 26. 25 and 26. Romans 11, 25 and 26. All right, remember we talked about, you want to write right beside the day of salvation. All right, he's talking to a Jewish believer. All right, watch what he says. The day is almost gone. We're reading out the NLT, Romans chapter number 13, verse 12. The night is almost gone. The day of salvation will soon be here. So remove your dark deeds like dirty clothes. Put on the shining army of right living. Because we belong, watch this, to the day. We must live decent lives for all to see. Don't participate in darkness, wild parties, drunkenness, sexual promiscuity, immoral living, quarreling, jealousy. Instead, Close yourself with the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. And don't let, don't let yourself think about the way to indulge your evil desires. So he's telling Lick, just like Peter just told them in 2 Peter, the day is at hand. You come down to the end, you got to understand, don't make the same mistake that Israel made back here in the days of Noah. Don't make the same mistake. Those people was eating and drinking and marrying and giving and marrying. No end to that ark. Four days they were destroyed. No end to that ark. Seven days, I'm sorry. Seven days the ark sat there. Door was locked. Couldn't nobody get in it. They was round that ark beaten. Noah let us in. Seven days, Noah. Noah, I know you're in there. Noah, open the door. Noah. Noah can't open the door. Because Noah didn't shut the door. So that's the same thing that Jesus Christ told them in Matthew chapter 7. Shall we go look at that? Sure. The same thing. We'll come back to Romans. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 7. See, this is the same thing that the Lord told them in Matthew. See, everything that they're getting now, Jesus already told them. Matthew chapter 7. And we want to look at verse 24. Matthew 7, 24. We read out the King James. Therefore, whosoever hear these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will like to him as a wise man which built his house upon the rock. I wonder who he's talking about. He's talking about Noah. Noah built his house up on the rock, up on the word. He did what God says. The rain descended, the floods came, the wind blew, beat up on that house. That house did not fall. Why? It was founded, or the foundation was upon the rock. That foundation is a rock, is Christ. 
Everyone that hear these sayings of mine, Jesus says, and doeth them not, shall be likened to a foolish man with be of his house upon the sand. You build your house upon the sand. You believe it in man. You're not believing in God. Your trust is not in God. Your trust is in man. So you got to understand the day going to declare. That's why I, my wife and I, we live this life. Whatever God put in my hand, I give to him cheerfully. I don't ask no questions. I don't care how much it is. It's not mine. It's his. My wife and I, this is how we live, right, honey? We live this life. Whatever God put in my hand, I tell my wife, it's not ours. It's his. I'll never run out. You know why? It's all his anyway. Everything belonged to him. He allowed you to use what he has to bless him in the earth. Let me say it again, because you don't get it. God let me use what he has to bless him in the earth. So when I give God back what he gave me, he knows. Isn't that awesome? God, give me everything I want. He said, now, don't forget your partner in ministry. So I said, Lord, I give to you first. My wife will tell you, this ministry is 35 years old. We have never lacked in this ministry. We understand that principle. We own nothing. The breath that I breathe is God's breath. The house I live in is God's house. The children I have, they belong to the Lord. Everything I got, God gave it to me. So when God, when a man understands the principle, well, you make sure God is first in your life. The first principle of walking with God is to know who's number one. God is first. And you, 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 God is first in the way you live. My wife, she, bless her heart, I love her so. She knows we have worked, we walk this thing out. If I act like I'm going to come short, my wife will come to me and say, honey, that's, that's God's. We can't mess with that. Give to God what's belong to God. How many remember what that verse was? They came to him and asked him about Herod, the king, Caesar. He said, you give to Caesar what's belong to Caesar, and you give to God what belong to God. That's how my wife and I live our life. That's how we live our life in this ministry. Everything belongs to God. Everything you can see. This building that you see, God gave it to us. It's not ours. He let us use it. Everything is his. When you live that life, you are not the owner. You the steward. God, can anybody hear what I say? You are not the owner of nothing. You the steward of all things. You the manager. Everything. When God gives you a car, He wants to see how well you can manage it. He gives you a home, let's see how well you can manage that, son. Don't let it go to your head. Got something bigger than that for you. Let me see, can you manage it? I'll give you a bank account. Let me see how well you can manage it. J.C., you know what I'm talking about, don't you, boy? God wants to see, can you manage? 
That boy called me a many days and said, Dad, man, I've been studying on manager. God want to know, can I manage? So you got it now, son. Just be the manager. Do I want to be the owner? Just be the manager. Hallelujah. Ain't that awesome? That's why God showed me. He said, son, I know this church costs a lot of money. It's not yours, it's mine, but I want you to manage it. What a mighty God I serve. Let's go back. Let's go back to Romans. Got a couple of things I want to show you. So I took you through, let no man deceive you. I told you to the just shall live by faith. I took you through once in the end of the world. Then I showed you the night is almost gone. The day is at hand. What day, Pastor? The day of salvation. The day of wrath. They were both at hand with Israel. There's no day of wrath with us. Look at Romans 4.15. Oh, my God, I'm so glad you tuned into this service. There's no day of wrath to the body of Christ. So when I get over here and say, yeah, we shall all stand before the judgment and see the Christ. Whoa, 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 whoa. Who are you reading to? You sure not reading to the body of Christ because we are not, we are not judged according to our works. Romans chapter 4 and verse 15. Watch what the Bible says. Because the law worketh wrath. Don't stop there. Where no law is, there's no transgression. Wait a minute. I got my NLT right here. Let me, let me read that out the NLT. Romans 4, 15. For the law always brings punishment. Wait a minute. The law always brings punishment on those who try to obey it. Well, we're not under law. Romans 6, 14, why are you there? Romans 6, 14. We're not under the law. Sin, sin I'm reading out the NLT, sin shall no longer, sin is no longer your master. Romans 6, 17, 6, 14, I'm sorry. Out of NLT. Sin is no longer your master. You will no longer live under the requirements of the law. Romans 6, 14 out of NLT. You're not living out the requirements of the law. You're not under the law. You're under grace. Romans 6, 14. What an awesome verse out of the NLT. Sin is no longer your master. You no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. Hallelujah. You live under the freedom of God's grace. I don't know why people just, they just think they're under the law. You are not under no law. You need to learn how to be under grace because that's what you're under, under God's grace. So Romans chapter 13, let's go back there again. Now, we are reading this out of the NLT, brother, remember? Romans 13 and verse 11. I'm going to wait because I know I got you off of that. Romans 13, 11 under NLT. Here we go. That this is all the more urgent. You know how late it is? Time is running out. Wake up, for our salvation is near than when we first believed. The night is almost gone. The day of salvation will soon be here. The day of salvation will soon be here for you. Remember, your salvation is in the cross. I know what I told you now. I told you Romans chapter 11. Write that down. Romans chapter 11, verse 25 and 26. See, the, like I said, the Holy Ghost will bring things to my remembrance. Now, I'm going to go to it just a moment, not now. Let me finish this in Romans while I'm here, but write that down. Romans 11, 25, and 26. We're going to go there in the King James after this. He says, the night is first spent. The night is almost gone. The day of salvation will soon be here. 
the, the day of salvation will soon be here. Now let's go to Romans. Let's see who he's talking to. Romans, you're in Romans 13. Go back, go back to chapter number 11 and verse number 25. We can look at verse 25 and 26. So you got to understand he's not talking. See, Romans chapter, Romans chapter 9, 10, 11, 12 and 3. All those, you, you, you talking to Israel. Romans chapter number 11, verse 25. That's, that's where we're going to go. King James, watch this. For I will not have you brethren, ignorant brothers, not, you know, they weren't ignorant brothers, but he didn't want to be ignorant, of this mystery, see, lest you should be wise in your own conceit. That blindness in part is happening to Israel until the fullness of the Gentile become in. This, this Israel was blinded. That's why when Paul says, awake to righteousness, wake out of your sleep, that's what he's talking about because they've been blind. And verse number 26, here we go. And so all Israel shall be saved. Now what does that mean? Talking about 12 tribes. Come on now, all Israel, 12 tribes. All Israel shall be saved. Now I'm going to take you through this because I opened it up for you. All Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer. They're going to come out of Zion. Zion is Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the church of God. They're going to come out of Zion, come out of the church of God. The deliverer. And shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. They was waiting for the Lord to return. Where was he? He was with the church. The church was taken out in Revelation chapter 7. He's going to come out of John, the deliverer, going to turn away on God and from Jacob. This is my covenant to them when I shall take away their sins as a nation. As a nation. Let's go back to Daniel 12, 1. Quickly. King James Version, you can stay there. Daniel chapter 12. See, all this stuff is so good, man. That's why you got to know all the books. Daniel chapter number 12 and verse 1. Daniel is telling them the time of the end. He's going to tell you what's, what happened at the time of the end. I'm getting everything with the end time. He says, at that time, talking about the end, 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 end when Christ died, Shall Micah stand up, the great prince was standing for the children of thy people. We're talking about Israel, Daniel. There shall be a time of trouble. Now remember, that came after Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. We saw that in Acts chapter 8. I'm sorry. Yeah, Acts chapter 8, verse 1, 2, 3. Great persecution as it never has been since the day and never shall be. So he said they're going to be... Uh, there shall be a time of trouble, Jacob's trouble, they call it. So just never since there was a nation, even to that time and at that time, thy people, Daniel, shall be delivered. Remember, that's what he just got through telling him in, in Romans eleven twenty six: All Israel shall be saved. Thy people shall be delivered. Everyone that shall be found, watch this, written in the book. Now, that's very important because you are not in a book. Or should I say the book? Old Testament, the book of life. Old Testament, the tree of life. All those things were fulfilled by Christ. When you're in Christ, you're in the book of life. When you're in Christ, you're in the tree of life. Old Testament, there were types and shadows of who Christ was. All right? Many of them, that's, watch what it says in verse 2. Many of them 
that sleep in the dust. That's what happened when Jesus came back. People who are saved in Christ now, you are not put in a coffin with your soul in it. Why? Because 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 say to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Old Testament, your soul was in the body. New covenant, your soul is in Christ. Your body goes to the ground because God puts you in a new body, Christ. You are the body of Christ. Many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Didn't you hear him just says in Romans chapter 13, awake. Some of them to everlasting life and some of them to everlasting contempt. That's exactly what happened to them, a fulfillment. Jesus told them that. John chapter 5, verse 28 and 29. He told them what would happen. Verse 3 says, And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. They that turn away men into righteousness at the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book. How long are we going to stay sealed, Lord, until the time of the end? Many shall run to and fro, knowledge shall be increased. How long, how long, Lord? How long I'm going to shut it up? How long, Lord? I'm going to shut it up to the time of the end. Go to verse 8. And I heard, but I understood not, Daniel says. And then it says, I, O oh Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he says, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed. How long they sealed? To the time of the end. How long they sealed? To the time of the end. Many shall be justified. Wait a minute, at the time of the end, Lord? Yeah. Many shall be justified, purified, made white, tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly. None of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, the daily sacrifice is to the, is the Israel burning altar and sacrifice, and then the fulfillment was Christ. Until that's taken away, something's going to happen. The abomination that make it desolate or the abomination of desolation going to be set up. Well, what was he set up? Matthew chapter 24 and 15. When you see the abomination of desolation in the holy place, in Jerusalem, the temple. The temple been torn down, church. It can't be in your future. From that time, the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, the abomination that make it desolate set up, set up. There shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days, or twelve hundred and ninety days. Blessed he that waited in coming to a thousand three hundred and five and thirty days, or thirteen hundred and forty five days. 35 days, but go thy way, Daniel, to the end. To the end, Daniel. Thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. At the end of the day. That's why when Jesus came, he said this in John. Go to John chapter, let's read this, John 5. John chapter 5. Watch what Jesus is going to say. Going to blow their mind. I'm going to give you 24, 25, and I'm going to give you 28 and 29. We're done. 24, 25, out of the King James. James. John chapter 5, verse 24. Verily, verily, I say to you, he that hears my words and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death to life. Verily, verily, I say to you, the hour is coming and now is. When the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. Who would this young boy think he's talking to? Verse 28. Marvel not at this. The hour, not days, the hour is coming, in the which all are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good to the resurrection of life, 
They that have done evil to the resurrection of damnation. My time is up. I thank you for yours. When Jesus came, everybody had to arise, awake, because Jesus called. When he walked out to the tomb of Lazarus, he looked at Lazarus' tomb and said, Lazarus, thank God he said one thing. Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus. Lazarus came forth wearing grave clothes. They looked at him and said, loose him and let him go. Then he told him in John eleven twenty five, 25, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. You believe this? Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, put your faith in it. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection, God promised you eternal life. No game, no gimmicks. You believe Christ died for your sins, he was buried, and God raised him from the dead, you will have eternal life. But if you don't believe, and you die with your faith in something else, your soul will burn in hell for eternity. My time is up. I thank you yours. Thank you for yours. The door of faith is open unto you.